Uh, welcome to this little video here and this is a very spontaneous video and I thought I will record it here Carnival Rose Monday night at almost 8 o'clock in the evening. Uh, nevertheless I wanted to share this with you on my desktop here. This is like something that you rather don't see in my videos but people were asking me about this desktop and what I'm using there some identified it hey it's KDE Plasma hey you're using Linux I'm also using Linux why are you using Linux what are you using blah 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 and uh, so many questions about this that I thought maybe I will do a quick roundup and uh, start from the beginning if you watched or followed my channel a little bit longer you will notice that I have lots and lots of um, videos about Linux because yes my channel started it was in German back then started with Linux topics open source topics lots and lots of topics talking about the desktop about many other things there I can maybe just go in here and show it to you if you just search for and now the channel is called LL Tech View. But if you search for LL Tech View Linux, you will see lots and lots of Linux related videos here. Not only camera reviews, but reviews about Linux distributions and uh, thin clients. This is like a video about init RD Linux, how it works, Alex Cute in its first version 010, a Netrunner core running here on my HP Spectre um podcast episodes as well as uh, presenting linux uh, like this i think was ubuntu depper drake on uh, on a television show called uh, giga games so what mainly was focused for for gamers but like you see 11 years ago so it's very very old um some other things about linux and so on so yes this is how my youtube channel started linux topics so linux open source and then it evolved into Sailfish OS, which is like a Linux-based uh, distribution for smartphones. And from there, it um, yeah, evolved into various other things like GNOME, Plasma, Plasma Next, how it was called back then in the day. You see lots and lots of Linux stuff there. Also here, HP Spectre X360, three years review running Linux, I released one year ago. Um, and uh, Ubuntu GNOME, lots and lots of Linux stuff there. Also Haiku stuff, another open source operating system, PC, BSD, uh, my own Linux distribution back in the day, uh, 7OS, then Project Neptune, which um, ultimately released or came then to the distribution that you see running here right now. Many people ask me, what kind of Linux distribution is this? Uh, it's yeah, Neptune Linux and uh, I'm also showing lots and lots of stuff there as well. Some tips and tricks there, uh, other Linux distributions, audio stuff that I fixed, um, various different things there. So this is how my channel started. This is why you see lots and lots of Linux stuff here on this channel because I'm still into Linux. I'm still using Linux. It's just at one point smartphones came in and were a little bit more interesting and smartphone photography was very interesting as well for me and this is why yeah this channel like grew with smartphones a bit but of course i still have i think some viewers that are also interested in linux stuff so i will post probably some videos some more videos uh, maybe in the future about linux stuff nevertheless this is the desktop and this is actually yes this is my linux distribution called neptune you can also go into the about here just use this here about system and you will see that this is uh, neptune 8 juna and um, here this is the website neptunos.com you can go onto this website if you are interested in the linux distribution uh, go to firefox here firefox my main browser as you can see here i also have chrome the bad version and chromium the open source version which chrome is based upon so this is basically chromium is basically minus the google stuff most of the google stuff at least so as you can see here let me switch to english maybe um 
it is available here for download. You can download the latest and greatest version here. Maybe you will want to download a newer version. You can just go to download neptunos.com and then slash dev. And there I have, I think, a newer version already online. It's just like a newer version, like you can see from beginning of uh, uh, beginning of February. Uh, still in testing there, but yeah, you can get the newest version from there. Otherwise, you can just click on the page there. There's some screenshots as well. You see how the UI looks like, uh, very similar to what I'm showing here right now. So this is my Linux distribution that I, I don't know, started it also kind of all time, probably roughly the same time as now I started it. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we're still doing it. So it's like a, a two, two people right now. One is like uh, responsible for the website and I'm responsible for the whole operating system itself and building it together. Nevertheless, uh, this is the uh, Linux distribution that I'm using, my Linux distribution. So yeah, dog food, you know, you know the saying like eat your own stuff that you create. <laughs> uh, dog fooding, I think it's called. So that means in this case, I'm using my own distribution. So also to see bugs, if bugs appear, to fix bugs and so on. The desktop that I'm using here is KDE Plasma version 527.5. This is currently what is in Debian stable where Neptune 8 is based upon. Uh, we have KD Frameworks 503 and Qt version 5.15.8. And uh, you can see one maybe specialty if you just run your everyday Linux system. You might not get it. It's uh, the platform, the graphics platform that I'm running on is Wayland instead of X11 that you used to have. You see a little bit about my hardware as well. Ryzen 7 5800U with Radiant Graphics. It says 15 gigabytes of RAM, which actually is 16 gigabytes or should be 16 gigabytes and AMD uh, a Radeon graphic, uh, graphics card here as well and you see uh, Zenbooks UX uh, 325A is the one or UM 325SA is the one that I'm having here as a, it's a laptop basically. So enough of this. Uh, the Linux distribution that I'm using here has a custom icon theme, custom stuff, you know, stuff that we ship the distro with and um, a few applications that I installed and I'm working on when I'm doing my content creation. First of all, how do I get my videos that I'm usually recording on smartphones onto my, um, how do I get them onto my device? So there are various different applications and methods to do this. Of course, I can just plug in my smartphone USB-C cable and then using MTP, which is the media transfer protocol that Microsoft invented in dark ages. Uh, but it, it is really dark ages. It's like not my favorite kind of thing. I want to do it over the air. So I'm using KDE Connect. I did a dedicated video. Probably I will link it down below as well if you're interested in KDE Connect because this one is a tool. Even if you're not a Linux user, you can use KDE Connect. Not only on Linux, you can use it on macOS, you can use it on Windows, you can use it uh, on very different smartphones. Also to transfer files from one smartphone to another if they are not from the same manufacturer, if they don't have Google services on, if one is like, for example, Linux distribution smartphone like Selfish OS and the other one is an Android one. Uh, or the other one now also is an iOS one because iOS also now has a KD Connect client as well. You can transfer data very, very easily. But I used to use KD Connect here because it's very easy to track stuff. Like for example, here you can see I have three smartphones currently connected. My Xperia Pro i, which is like my work phone. There's my work SIM inside and I use it every day for two-factor authentication and such things that I have installed there. And you know how hard it is to move from one phone to another for two thirty. But it's a very, very good phone. I can see the percentages of my battery here. So I get also a warning if I'm running low on battery, which is quite interesting, especially when I'm working, I'm not using this as, as my work computer, but if I'm working, it will also notify me if it's running out of power. Then this here is the Xperia 1 Mark 5 that I'm having here right now, also in front of me. And yes, the battery is really truly at 84%. And the other one is the Mate 60 Pro that I just charged on the wireless charging pad. So you see it is 100% here. Um, yeah, I can also not only see this in theory, I could like also see the connectivity. I'm not sure why it's not like showing this right now, but I have various different options. Like for example, why is it in German still? I think I said it to English. Nevertheless, um, I can just 
moved files over to there so I can just click on this and then move just some files over to the smartphone if I want to which is quite cool but I can also do the other way around so on the smartphone itself I have the possibility to say share with and I can choose other smartphones or I can choose here my desktop and this is how I usually share my video files if they're not too large because I think KD Connect has a little bit of a limit here and there and sometimes uh, especially on some Chinese phones that like to kill apps in the background that use a little bit too much power. Uh, they tend to kill KD Connect quite frequently, so they have to have it open on the smartphone or just configure the power management to uh, not kill it. Anyway, what I can do, you can see uh, various different options. Like, for example, I can share files to it, but I can also take a photo, for example, quite cool. So I have the possibility to remotely take a photo if I want to. I can just search for my phone and let it ring. Or I can just uh, simply also, I think, but possible, yeah, to, to just browse the folders and see what kind of files I have here, which is also quite nice. So I can just simply... Uh, just if I have, like I would have attached it. And here I have KineMaster, for example. I'm doing lots of work with KineMaster. And here you can see on my Mate 60 Pro, currently I have the Mate 60 Pro with iPhone 15 Pro Max video that I rendered on it. And I can just simply download it and then share it or, or edit it or whatever I want to do with it. So this is quite cool. And transfer rates are also quite nice uh, and, and fast. I like this uh, browsing option a little bit more than the possibility to transfer the file from the phone uh, onto the desktop because it's a bit easier to search for the file here on the on the desktop than on the phone itself and also this method here is a lot more stable especially for the larger files than the sending method for some reason um, yeah and sms uh, messages i can also send so it's opening up here loading conversations and i could see then sms conversations here yes it can also show some, show me sms conversations it's not working i think for other conversations here but sms is working i never did this before could probably take a while and you can see i have even the pixel 8 pro i have here if i would have any messages there you could also load this uh, quite nice it can also answer i think uh, the the messages when they come in and when when new messages appear ah you see the pixel 8 pro appeared it, it, it's just like the pixel is a weird device i always told you about the pixel 8 pro having weird issues in this case it's just like sometimes appearing here sometimes not appearing here and you can see not all features are enabled. This is like depending on stuff that you enable on the smartphone itself. Like for example, I have the photo access enabled or camera access enabled on the Mate 60 Pro. This is why I have the possibility to take a photo there. And on the other device, I don't have this. Um, yeah, this is why. It's a very, very powerful tool. And this is the tool that I usually use for transferring over all my data to this laptop if I want to cut stuff on the laptop there. Uh, sometimes it's just like um, for some videos just to make a screenshot out of the video and uh, doing a thumbnail um, for it which is also a thing that I um, tend to do here and uh, yeah we can go through this process uh, maybe with an example I have uh, let's let's go into KD Connect and click the configure button this will open up the main UI you see various different devices I had connected here or that are still available. And let me go and uh, enable KD Connect on my Xiaomi Pad 6 Pro that I didn't talk much about, but you can see here, it's already here. It's also connected now. This is one of the, uh, not phones, but tablets in this case that is killing KD Connect in the background. So I have it now open there in the foreground. So it is now here. And here I have various different options that I can, uh, plugins that I basically can. Uh, turn on one of the biggest plugin that I really like to use is the possibility to share the clipboard for some reason it's in German here but it allows you to sharing the clipboard between the device so if I copy something on my desktop I can just paste it into my device or the other way around so this is very uh, very fine as well anyway what I can do is if a Xiaomi pad is now appearing here is I can just simply uh, search this device and then I have yeah, all the possibilities to see here, the various different um, things. And I think where I want to go in for is not movies. I think it's under DSIM and or is it under movies? Ah, it's pro probably under movies, KineMaster. I did a video comparison uh, lately. Uh, bu 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 here, the Oppo Find X7 Ultra versus the Find X6 Ultra, uh, 6 Pro, as you see today, uh, four hours ago. Anyway, I can just simply copy this 
and uh, let me just go to uh, let's go to videos then and just paste it in here and it will start copying the file you see it is via air it's 3.5 gigabytes so yeah it's a bit slow it's roughly around the 7 8 uh, maybe 10 mbit megabytes per second not mbit megabytes per second uh, that is like copying here maybe it gets a bit faster there it depends on the wi-fi and you can see my wi-fi is <laughs> I'm a bit further away from the uh, from the Wi-Fi here. I also have Wi-Fi information that I can show you. Like uh, the signal strength is only 56%, and you can see maximum is 650 Mbit per second, 5 gigahertz network here. You can see the speed here of uploads and downloads there as well. Uh, yeah, this is that. So you can see, yeah, it's copying over the file. And this is usually what I do, is uh, copy over the file to create a thumbnail. So this is why I want to show you how, how it's done. Like I did the whole video editing on the Xiaomi Pad 6 Pro because it's much faster to render out the 4K video here than on my, my laptop itself, which is one of the reasons. Cool thing is, even if it's like running here, you can see the thumbnail is updating, but I also can use MPV here. Let me mute. Uh, MPV to play back the video already, which is quite cool. So even if it's downloading, it's no issue. It's optimized for YouTube, so of course I can play back the video. And one of the things that I need to do, what I usually do for thumbnails, is not only play back this uh, video here, but uh, let's go to the important bits and pieces which are very nice for the thumbnail. Like for example, this might be a very nice photo for the thumbnail, maybe not. Here we go, and this is a good photo for the thumbnail, I think. I go into full screen, and what I will do is like when no UI element is on here, I'll just press the print screen, and this will just do a screenshot, and I just say save. Or what I can also do is like copy it into the clipboard, and then I will just go out of here, and I will go into the different desktop. Let's go magic here. Top right corner, it's a hot corner it's to switch between all desktops. Uh, Linux user will know this, um, Mac OS users maybe as well. Windows users are a bit confused probably now. Uh, we have virtual desktops here, so I can switch easily between virtual desktops. And what I will do here is uh, open up an application called uh, Inkscape. I like to do this because it's very, very good for handling texts and doing my thumbnail in there. And the first thing I will do is like set my format to the video HD, full HD. This is what YouTube thumbnails usually are made out of. And then I want pixels instead of millimeters. And then I just paste it in here. I hit Control and V and I have it here as you can see. And what I can do now is simply align it to the page. And then I have like my thumbnail. Not completely my thumbnail because I have to do something like the text that I usually add to. And what I can see here is I have, for example, some SVG files like... I just could use this one here, for example. Just as an example. So this is one of the SVG files that I have with uh, the Oppo Find X7 Ultra versus the Vivo X100 Pro. And what I could do is just simply copy this and just paste it in here. And this is what I wanted to have. And then put it here towards the side. You can see it's a bit smaller. Why is it a bit smaller? Doesn't make sense at all. Uh, let's put it at the top right and then make the green a bit bigger. Should be height 1080. There we go. Um, then I move this a bit to the right. There we go. And then I can just do the thumbnail here right now. Eh? I just change this to white text maybe. Make it white, make this white. Change this to Finex 6 Pro. And this versus needs to be white as well. And uh, let's move this up here. And this is how I do a thumbnail usually. Move this up a little bit. And now I have a thumbnail already. It's cool, isn't it? And the cool about uh, cool thing about this, I can just change the text here. I have everything as SVG files saved, and you can sh say, uh, change the text very, very easily. Not only this, I <laughs> could in theory also change the text uh, because it's an SVG file. Just let me save this under Oppo, Oppo Finex 7 
Ultra versus Sine X6 Pro. Um, if you know SVG files, if I just go into my picture folder and search for the, I can filter by the way, Control I, filter, very nice, KD Plasma, Dolphin, File Manager, very, very nice thing. Uh, Find X7, exactly, now I have like the SVG file. I could even open the SVG file with a text editor because SVG file is just like XML format. And I can just search for camera comparison. There you see, there's camera and then there's comparison. I could change the text simply. <laughs> so I don't need to have this um, SVG editor. I can just, just change the text to 7 Pro or whatever I want to have there. And then it will be 7 Pro. So I, in theory, can do it on, on a terminal. I don't even have like to have a graphical user interface to do this. this is why I like to use the SVG file. Anyway, this is how I do thumbnails usually. Of course, I go in here and then hit also export. I want to export the whole. Uh, by the way, why I'm still downloading this here. I don't have to download this anymore. Get rid of it. Uh, and yeah, just export it. Hit export here and now I have a PNG file as well. Save this one. And I have the PNG file, which is like uh, the regular one. Uh, sometimes the PNG file is a bit too big. Like in this case, it's 2.1 megabytes bytes and uh, YouTube only accepts uh, two megabytes so what I will do is just in this uh, graphical editor here by the way of menu bar well it's just like hidden because by default when I do the comparison between various different uh, photos you have like usually this there on the left and then on the right the other photo there and uh, yeah it's now a bit messed up but Usually you have it like this, yeah. Uh, those two, I'm using this this uh, default uh, photo viewer called Gwen View, uh, also by KDE, which is quite nice. And uh, yeah, if I go and turn on the menu, I can say save under or save as, and then I choose JPEG here. And JPEG has higher compression rate there than PNG, and so I have 342 kilobyte per second, which is quite nice as well. So I have the thumbnail ready here, so I can just release this thumbnail if I want to, which is quite nice. So, yeah, this is in terms of software that I'm using here to create the thumbnail, and uh, I can just close this up here. And uh, other software, sometimes I'm also using the device for cutting video, and I have two video cutting ap applications. What you see here on the desktop, it's called Shotcut, and I cut it some videos, I edited some videos here, like the Open Oppo Find X6 Pro with Magic 5 Pro. I'm sure if uh, it's missing the, the files because I don't have the external drive plugged in. I usually have an external drive and I save all those uh, files there. And then I can just cut the video here on, on uh, Shotcut, which is a very nice editor as well. It takes a bit of a while to render, but it's still nice. If I want even more uh, power, I can use uh, KDN Live, which is another video editor, which is like the best open source video editing application, I think, on the market still. And lots and lots of uh, projects as well that I created with this. And uh, it allows me to also edit footage quite easily and uh, without any issues and render them out as well. The various different rendering options here. I like the VAPI, which is like the, um, it's a little bit faster than the normal, not only using CPU, but also the GPU to render, but it's still much slower than my tablet here that I have right now, but still. Uh, sometimes I like to use this as well for uh, doing stuff and uh, yeah that's this other software that I'm using Foxit Reader for PDFs yeah sometimes I get those weird PDFs that I cannot read with Ocular which is the default um, for KD Plasma I'm not sure if I have any document for this I'm probably not to, to, to demonstrate it to you, but uh, sometimes I have this Foxit reader because it has uh, more compatibility with PDFs, especially those PDFs with forms and such things that you have to fill out stuff. Then I have Steam, yes, sometimes I'm also gaming here and Steam is uh, natively running on Linux and there are lots and lots of Linux libraries there as well. I'm not even sure, yeah, there's an iAccount, could, lo could log in with this one um, and uh, yeah, I have some games like Counter-Strike, for example, that I have in there, some other games as well. Using Telegram as well for chatting and, and exchanging with some people there. There's nice communities out there that, that, that uh, also talk about Linux, that talk about photography, smartphone talk photography and such things. Then Discover. Discover is nothing else than uh, the software management tool under KD Plasma. 
the default one for most distributions and yeah i can have updates here if i want to so you can see there's some updates going on there i can search for new applications if i want to and one of those applications that i'm currently using here for recording the screencast is obs and obs i think is well known already because it's not only available for Linux, it's also available for various different other uh, applications for live streaming and so on. But it's very, very good also for setting up here uh, the possibility to record uh, stuff. And I'm also using this when I'm recording uh, my um, comparisons. Usually what I do when I do my comparisons, I have there's a nice uh, possibility to just divide this into two. And you can see I have now the same folder here. But what I usually would do, do we have some pictures here? Uh, let's just take this one here and I'll go in here and I would choose also pictures and I go into impressions like this. So we have like usually both open here and I can already compare which one which which is which one is which. I can also see okay uh, which one is not very good or if I have more photos taken with this phone than with the other phone then I can just simply throw out some photos there that I don't need. I have usually lot more photos so these are the just the cur curated ones i can compare them a little bit like this and then of course i open it up in grand view and then put this to the right and then i put this to the uh, the other way put this to the left this to the right and then i can compare you can middle press to zoom in such things to zoom 200 percent you can see very easily done so this is how i usually do my um comparisons of course there is one thing to do the comparisons you see always like there's a, like a, a, a sub bar that shows the, the the title of the devices i'm also doing this with uh, inkscape as you can see here and this is the little bar and i export it just as a png file and you will see i have lots and lots of banners here and this is one of the banners cool thing about kde like you have the maximum uh, maximum minimize button if you right click on the maximize button it will maximize it only to stretch it out basically and what i do is just simply put it like this then kde has some very cool functions like for example yeah it's not hiding the desk uh, the, the the taskbar here but i can just say okay have it in foreground always and this is why i have it in foreground and i can also say hide this uh, window border window border hidden and uh, then i could just simply say okay this on the right this on the left or this on the <laughs> right and this on the left hide those window borders as well and then you have your typical setup as you can see here where i can like zoom in zoom out such things so this is what i can do with uh, those little inbuilt kd plasma features here which is quite nice um yeah another thing i was talking about kd connect i have all those devices here i can browse them but when i have the file manager already open you can see under devices all the devices are appearing here as well i can just simply press on one of the devices and just search it as well which is also quite nice all over the air just just have to be in the same network same wi-fi and it's working uh, nicely um what else can i talk about pretty much what, what other applications I have here. So sometimes I'm really also listening still to music. So I have Amarok for this, which is a very old player, but it's still uh, good for listening to music and especially also podcasts. If I have podcasts inserted here, I don't have any because I deleted the folder right now for this. But this is uh, usually what I listen to when I'm using this um, as my music management tool. And uh, the next thing, is there anything else? Yeah, VLC media player also have still for playing back. I'm using Thunderbird as email client. Yes, you can also use Kmail or contact. I'm using Kmail and contact as an email client for my work stuff. Uh, also with the exchange and Duff mail contacts and uh, email and calendars uh, syncing functionality. I have LibreOffice as my office uh, of choice. I, I used to use Markdown with Retext, which is a very nice application sure if you have anything open no i don't have anything here I used to do some notes here with this one here i switched now to using the uh, inbuilt notes application on the smartphones that can sync up like for example the xiaomi pad 6 is syncing up with my other xiaomi devices and my huawei devices with uh, the huawei notepad or note notes i think it's called it's also syncing up all the stuff and i have for example 
lots and lots of uh, specs, camera specs, specs already written down there, so I can just easy copy and paste it to the KDM Live or um, KineMaster or whatever application I'm using there. Yeah, nothing else. I'm using. I think one of the most interesting things is how do I plan on the Linux? Uh, Linux how do I plan on Linux? Maybe not only in Linux, but how do I plan my videos? And because those applications are just like web browsing stuff, nothing very interesting, I think, for you. Um, so how do I do this? How do I plan it? Let's go back to Firefox. And there you see one YouTube tab here. This is how I plan stuff. So I have a simple, I have Nextcloud setup also running on Linux, on the Linux server. On, in my home actually <laughs> running there and uh, the possibility to have access to it is also quite nice there and I think I forgot to update it because it's like I have to update stuff there um, and giving me some notifications there about updates and, and some cards but I have an um, application called DEC and this allows me to plan doing this like kind of uh, canvas uh, system uh, that allows me to put like to do what's in work what I have done already but it's not released yet and what I've released and also sadly <laughs> an ever-growing like list of things where I just don't have time to do it. Uh, ideas that I put in here on the to-do list either. Um, yeah, usually I put it on a to-do list that I want to do like for example Xiaomi 14 Pro versus uh, Honor Magic 5 Pro. I'm not sure I probably will <laughs> at one point move it to I don't have time for it. I did a Xiaomi 14 Pro versus Magic 4 Ultimate already and someone suggested me to do it um, against the Magic 5 Pro, so I put it on to-do list. So usually I have this to-do list here. Usually it's a bit fuller here. I moved a lot of stuff to just don't have time. So apologize to you if I just wrote, I put it on a to-do list, but it's now landed probably on the, I don't have time for this. Uh, kind of uh, put. Then there's something work in progress. As you can see, I have Nubia Z60 Ultra versus Oppo Find X7 Ultra in progress currently. Probably when the video is out, it's already released, but this is how I usually do it. And then I have various different categories that I can put uh, in. Like, for example, I have to still do something here on this. And uh, yeah, I'm assigning it. I can like, also put like a date here this is like usually when i get uh, stuff to test like iems or something like this then they i promise those manufacturers yeah after i, I got them it takes like about uh, two weeks to 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 do to finish up the video so i put like a date in here this can be very helpful then to to put a bit of pressure on me otherwise i can put like some some other stuff in here i can upload files here like for example photos i could upload directly from the phones into my next cloud and then i have all the phones here uh, put together and connected to this uh, deck uh, for um, yeah, the comparison i can put comments eventually so if if I would not be the only one uh, working on this, I could put po uh, comments in here and then stuff like that I did with this one, like when did I create it? What did I do with it? Such things. I can also put like uh, also a little description in here and also put some files in here if I want to. Uh, so this little uh, I that gives me uh, information about, I can use Markdown here as well to do a checklist and so on. Uh, if I want to, yes, I can just show it to you. Uh, I think it's done like this, check one. And I can like say view it and then it looks like this and I can also mark it uh, and then it should be, I like this. Somehow you have also markdown support there. So these are the possibilities to do certain things and subtasks eventually if I want to do this. So very, very easy system here. I'm doing the videos alone, but I have to like also plan stuff. So this is why I'm using this. And I have filters, I have the possibility to search for stuff. So if I want to search for, um, I don't know, Harmony OS or something like this. I only have one uh, Hyper OS then. <laughs> so I only have one here. Um, I can filter out stuff for, for various different devices and so on. I can even create new uh, devices, add new stuff in here. Uh, filters, uh, as you can see here, that I have also available and such other things. So it's a very, very powerful tool. And the cool thing about this tool is it's also available not only on the desktop here as a website, but also as an independent application on Android smartphones, for example, you have the possibility to use this there as well, which is quite useful. Um, 
other things. Yeah, I'm using Firefox as my default browser. I have some add-ons there, like the Plasma integration, so I get nice little bubbles here, but also other benefits of the Plasma integration, like opening applications and uh, such things. Uh, have an ad blocker, of course. You have to have an ad blocker. Yeah, on YouTube, I would recommend you to disable it so I get a little bit of ad revenue, but for other applications, uh, other websites, um, you better off with using the ad blocker because you don't know what kind of ads uh, they are pushing to you and some might be even malicious malware. Um, I don't, uh, this is the possibility to sync up Nextcloud passwords, which is quite nice. So I can use Firefox uh, own password synchronization service with all my other phones. But what I like to use is like the possibility to save all my stuff on my own cloud. So no one else has access, uh, access to my passwords, just me. And you see here, like I have the password manager here in the next cloud built in as well. So very, very great tool, the next cloud here. So these are probably all the things that I use day to day or daily to create content about smartphones. <laughs> And photography and some other tips and tricks and so on. Of course, all the smartphones I'm using as well and the camera systems and so on to create content. So this is also something that you have to keep in mind. But yeah, this is uh, my Linux workflow. I have still this open here. Let's close it. Close it down. And uh, yeah, uh, would be super, super interesting to know. Are you interested in such videos? This is like behind the scenes and how the desktop works and what I'm using here. Um, are you interested in Linux videos and, and more Linux content or open source content in general? And not only smartphone photography comparisons and such things. Uh, like I said, I started with the, have hundreds of videos out about Linux and open source stuff. So most of them in German, but still, nevertheless, uh, some people found it very interesting. So uh, I think it might be something as a side dish to all the smartphone and then camera comparisons uh, to have this as well here. So if you're interested, just write it down in the comment section. What do you think about my workflow? Do you have some improvement suggestions and so on? Uh, what kind of software are you using? Are you using Linux as a desktop? What uh, kind of desktop system are you using? And uh, yeah, what do you think about my setup? Uh, that's everything for this uh, probably a bit longer video. I don't even know how long I recorded here now. 36, 37 minutes, wow. Um, so if you're interested, uh, write down in the comment section. If you're not interested, write it down as well. So uh, maybe I'll start a new channel just about Linux stuff then. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, that's it um, about this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time, bye.